Have you been taxed enough already? Yeah! Thank you, Father, for the gift of this nation, for creating us and then giving us inalienable rights. Help us, Father, not to squander these precious gifts. Give us the strength to discern and to do your will. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are here today to draw a line in the sand. We are no longer going to allow our representatives to ignore our founders' envisioned ideals. The massive spending, unconstitutional regulation, and funding of failed businesses must stop. Do you people have any idea what you're doing here today? Yes, sir. I have lived in countries where you would be shot, beaten up, put in jail, any of a number of things for doing what you're doing today. And if that doesn't separate the United States of America from the rest of the world, I don't know what does. <laughs> but sooner or later, if the American people don't react and say enough, they will slowly eat away these freedoms that have been so important to us all. It won't be immediate. That's why it's going to be more dangerous, because it's going to sneak up on you. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to those ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. You must ask yourself, what is the price you're being asked to pay? And make no mistake about it, that price is freedom itself, which no good man surrenders, but with his mind. We need to right the ship one election at a time. We'll continue holding tea parties. You be ready on November 3rd to stand up and be counted. Every eight dollars that I earn is gonna go to the government. And it's not just the taxing, it's the spending. We all know about this $787 billion stimulus package. This is Are you still satisfied to have no real representation in Washington, D.C. today? Are you still satisfied to have so many proven liars tell you every day what wonderful things they are doing for you and how much they care about you? Thomas Jefferson had an idea about taxes. He said there should be no permanent taxes, that every year they should figure out what the government needs, what it needs, and they'll collect the taxes they need to pay for that and not a penny more. How radical is that? Who thinks we need a pruning knife in Washington right now? Well, here's the problem. Yeah, we need a buzz saw. That's exactly right. He didn't have buzz saws back then. He thought a pruning knife was a pretty good thing. People see Mr. Jefferson now as a quiet man on a statue, but that was not the real Mr. Jefferson. Let me tell you what he said about being a little rowdy. He said, the spirit of resistance to government is so valuable on certain occasions that I wish it to be always kept alive. It will often be exercised when wrong, but better so than not to be exercised at all. I like a little rebellion now and then. The level of taxation in America today is more than serfs paid in the Middle Ages. Do you believe this country was founded on a tax revolt? With all this talk about stimulus, can you imagine what we could do if we could just get the government off our backs? You're not recording us so we can get arrested, are you? I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. So 
I don't want this to become a socialist state. I don't want this to become communist America. People all over the country are gathering to express their outrage and concern for the federal government and their inappropriate expenditures of our money. But what Washington, D.C. and the federal government has yet to get is they have yet to stand up and apologize to the American people for what they have done to wreck this economy. It is their irresponsible legislation and oversight that has caused what we are dealing with today. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you can't fix a spending problem with more spending. There's not much left on it, is there? I'm especially proud to be an American today because I am a naturalized citizen. I came here legally. I learned to speak English. I paid my dues, and I'm now standing here in front of you, living the American dream in Thomas Jefferson's town. After spending seven years in a refugee camp in Austria, as we sailed into New York City, the Statue of Liberty came out of that morning fog and all of us refugees ran over to the port side and almost capsized the boat. I cannot tell you what a feeling that was. If you have not been there, it just cannot be described. Have no doubt, our country is in the midst of a civil war. Yes, this is a civil war that we're in right now. It's not being fought with bullets and guns on the battlefield. It's being fought with the ammunition of ideas at our kitchen tables and at our backyard fences. 200 years ago, a small group of patriots set our nation on its course, and now our nation calls upon all of us to be patriots. So stand up, get involved, make a difference, and be a patriot. Good citizens' first duty is to take care of themselves so that they don't burden society. March on uh, Congressman. Well, we're taking a parade, is what we're calling it. It makes the police feel a little better when we don't call it a march. As the Patriots of '76 did to the support of the Declaration of Independence, so to the support of the Constitution and laws, let every American pledge his life, his property, and his sacred honor. Let every man remember that to violate the law is to trample on the blood of his father and to tear the character of his own and his children's liberty. Let reverence for the laws be breathed by every American mother to the lisping babe that prattles on her lap. Let it be taught in schools, in seminaries, and in colleges. Let it be written in primers, spelling books, and in the almanacs. Let it be preached from the pulpit, proclaimed in legislative halls, and enforced in courts of justice. And in short, let it become the political religion of the nation, and let the old and the young, and the rich and the poor, the grave and the gay, of all sexes and tongues, and colors and conditions, sacrifice unceasingly upon its altars. We're gonna keep up the momentum until the federal government gets it. Because remember, three words, we the people. Thank you all for coming. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.